Um, today's class is called Born to Teach. Born to Teach. Um, let's start with Isaiah 49 and 6. Isaiah 49 and 6. Let's start with that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So the Bible says it's a light thing that we should be his servant. And our job as teachers is to do what? To raise up the 12 tribes of Jacob and to, reserve, I mean, to uh, restore the preserve of Israel because we're in a decayed state and we need to be restored to our, how you say, prop, uh, our former glory, former estate. So Mosai has handpicked people to actually do the job. So that's why it says a light thing, because if the Most High chose you and tell you to go do something, no matter how scared you were, remember, every prophet, Moses, everybody complained, like, come on, man, I can't even speak English right. I can't even speak French. I can't even speak Spanish. But Most High's like, listen, with them two, 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 two words, you know, you're going to connect them properly. Don't worry about it. People are going to understand you. Even if you speak the new Hebrew, <laughs> don't worry. People are going to understand you. Because no matter what teacher is out there, don't we understand everything they're saying? Yes, sir. You follow, but do they all speak uh, English uh, the same way? Or those of you who listen in Spanish, some some of the, um, um, how you say, Northern Kingdom brothers, let me be like, et de, et de, et de, et de. a lot of et they go before the word come out. But once the word come out, people get it. Right. You follow what I'm saying? Because the Most High sent them to do a job, and the sheep, the sheep of the Most High are going to hear the prophets. Go to uh, Jeremiah 1 and 5. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1 and verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And, and before thou camest forth out of, the, out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. This is why it's such a light thing. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Read it again from the top. The book of I Jeremiah, chapter 1 and verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. See, see that? Most I, before we were even formed, you're going to go to Isaiah 49 and 5 now. Before we were even born, that means when we were in the heavens as a spirit, he knew who we were. And he handpicked prophets to go down to do the job. That's why I say it's a light thing. We were ordained to be prophets, born to do this. So at no time should we be scared to go out and teach the word because why? The spirit of the Most High is roaming in us. That's why we're able to, to um, how you say, understand the book like we do. That's why we're able to go from a, um, from a vagabond lifestyle, from a ruffian lifestyle, drug dealers, whatever we were in the world, and then out of the blue, we heard somebody teach, and then it's like, damn, hold up, that sounds familiar. I mean, we say it sounds good, but our spirit is like, yo, that sounds familiar. And then from listening and listening... Like, you know what? I'm changing my life. This is the way. That's what the Bible says. You're going to be walking and you're going to hear a voice that says, yo, this is the way. Walk ye therein. How do you think we were able to just change out of the blue? You have dudes that was making big money in the streets. People that was making big money in the world, like whether it's legal or Ill, uh, illegal. And to just get up and, and, and give up all that to follow the Lord. Like something got to be different about you. Actually, before you read that, give me uh, Jeremiah 17 and 4. So you got to understand one thing. The prophets are back, man. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17. Verse 4. In verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. You see that? Remember, Jeremiah, uh, Scripture said he was born and ordained to be a prophet. But at the same time, the Scripture says you're going to be discontinued from your heritage. Read. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So we disobey the laws of God. So because of that, most I say, I'm going to have you guys be discontinued from your heritage. But there will come a day where I'm going to wake you up again. So as we were discontinued from our heritage, 
Now picture Jeremiah hearing the word. Now you understand how powerful of a prophet Jeremiah was? So when he comes back, what do you think he's going to do again? He's going to be just as powerful. That's why people cannot understand how the hell this dude studying the Bible for a year and then he's just destroying people. Some brothers are like deadly, deadly, deadly with the Bible. How? How do you have somebody who go to school for eight years, got their divinity in theology, and cannot stand in front of a soldier? You got to think about that. A soldier that's been in the truth for a year. So you take somebody who's been studying the Bible. Matter of fact, put it this way. You take somebody who's like third and fourth generation, right? Christian, born in a house where all their pops were pastors. You with me? They themselves become a pastor. That means they grew up in a house that's supposed to have the ultimate knowledge of the Bible. And they've been bred since young to become, it's like, uh, not quiet, but I want to use that analogy. It's like uh, Samuel being raised up by Eli. We know they're wicked, but I'm making a point. So technically, you're supposed to have all the knowledge. So from that house now, you grew up in the church. From a young kid, they've been grooming you, having, having you uh, do little sermons. I grew up in a church where uh, there was kids' day, and the most eloquent kid would give uh, a sermon once in a blue. You see what I'm saying? Because they're grooming him to become a pastor. So you did all this, then went to the best school money can buy when it comes to scriptures. Right? Eight years, masters of divinity, mega church, and then we have a brother for eight months, nine months, that could eat your food. The reason is because, go now go to Isaiah 40, uh, 49 and 5. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 5. And now, saith the Lord that formed me from the womb, to be his, to be his servant. Most I formed him from the womb to be what? To be his servant. That's why Christ says, no man can come to me except you were chosen by the Father. You cannot buy this. You cannot say, well, let me go to school and, 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 uh, and learn this, pay 50 grand, 100 grand, whatever school st uh, course these days for theology, and then you're going to get it. No. Read it again from the top. And now, saith the Lord, that from me, from the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. So he was... He was formed from the womb, right? And what was his job? He was created to do what? To bring Jacob again to him. To bring Jacob again because Jacob will be discontinued from his heritage. Israel, we fell off. But most I ordained prophets to do one thing, to bring Israel again. To bring Israel again. So how do you bring Israel back? If we discontinued from our heritage, matter of fact, give me heritage to find out what is our heritage in Sirach. You know what I want? The book of Sirach, chapter 24 and verse 23. All these things are the book of the covenant of Mo... Excuse me. All these things are the book of the covenant of the Most High God. Even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage... Unto the congregation of Jacob. So this is the thing. All these things are the books of the covenant of the Most High God. Even the law which Moses commended for an heritage unto the congregation of Jacob. So when the scriptures say we discontinued from our heritage, we discontinued from the law. So to bring us back, for the prophets to bring us back, they got to bring us back to what? To our way of living. There is no nation that don't have laws to govern them. We are the lawless nation. That's why in the streets you see the things that are happening right now. And it's places like Chicago, and places like New Orleans, places like L.A., New York, and the Bronx. I mean, people are walling out, killing one another. Why? Because they have no laws. They forgot their heritage. You follow? So now it's our job as prophets of the Most High God to bring the people back to what their heritage, to teach them the law, statutes, and commandments. Because as you notice, Many of us live that lifestyle, but what changed us? This book right here, the laws. Because when we understood who we were, we understood Christ is black. We understood we were Israelites. We understood Christ came and died for us only. And we understood that if we didn't change our lives, 
we were not going to make it. That grace was a period of time God gave us to, to get our mind right. What did we do? We changed our ways automatically. You follow? So we're going to have uh, little uh, knickknacks and, and, I mean, uh, bumps on the road. But guess what? The scriptures are righteous men fall at seven times, get back up. So if you keep falling and you see that you're not getting back up, then something must be wrong. Maybe you're called not chosen. So that's for you to figure it out. Because this, this Bible right here, once you find out who you are, you're supposed to be hot. You're supposed to be on fire. There's no time to be lukewarm in this truth, especially in these days. Because as you're watching what's going on, time is drawing nigh. You got all kinds of new um, pestilences, you follow, and many more to come. So it's that time to come back to the Lord God, right? So now, as a prophet of the Most High God, born and ordained to bring back the 12 tribe, right? Keep reading. Let's read verse 6 again. I mean, 5 and 6 together. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49, and verse 5. And now, saith the Lord, that formed me from the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in, his, in, the, in the eyes of the Lord. And my God shall be my strength. And he said, it is a light thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. So because Mosai chose us and, and raised us and born us, created us from the womb, it's a light thing. That means if he give you a job to do, it's all, like just go and do it. It's going to get done right. Don't worry about it. But for that to happen, you must be walking in the Lord's statutes and commandments in the faith of Christ. So it's going to be a light thing to do this. So when you find out in the truth, we are brothers or sisters, it's pulling teeth to do anything. You got to really, really consider your walk because the scripture say it's a light thing. If it's a light thing, why you make life so difficult? Why it's always a problem with you? You, you get what I'm saying? So you got to check your spirit. Because if you're really about this truth, then there shouldn't be no issues. People shouldn't have you to uh, have to beg you to do things. There's no place where you where you should rather want to be but here. So if you find yourself wanting to be elsewhere, you follow. If you find yourself when when you're communicating, you always want to talk about other stuff. Start checking your spirit. Something could be wrong with you. Give me Ezekiel two verse seven. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse 7. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 2 and verse 7. So, start at 3. Verse, Ezekiel, chapter 2 and verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They, that, they and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. So the scriptures say, Son of man, I sent thee to who? A rebellious nation. To, to? To a rebellious nation. Read it from the top. And he said unto me, son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. To no, a stop. To the children of Israel. That's who the Most High sent us to. He did not send us to the, uh, how you say, the Europeans, the Asians. The Hamites, he sent us to the house of Israel. But the, the characteristic of Israel is that we are rebellious as hell because we've always been rebellious. Why are we so rebellious? Because we envy the other nations. We always wanted to be more like the other nations than to be like a true Israelite. To us, the law was grievous many a time. So we always preferred to do evil. But most I know who he created. So he sent the prophet to the children of Israel. So make that very clear, not to all nations. A rebellious people, right? Because why? We rebelled against the Most High and he punished us, but he has mercy. So now, knowing the evil that we've been through, now that Most High is waking us up again, you should be happy to seek the Lord ten times more. So if you're not seeking the Lord ten times more, and it's not because the prophets ain't doing their jobs, because the water has risen. Like when things first started, especially online, um, I believe like 10 to 15 people could have logged into class. So if you didn't get that slot, you're done. How many people can log into class now? As many that wants to log in. How many videos is on YouTube? Probably in the millions now. You follow? So the truth is there. 
Like it says, it would arise and it would be like a river where all the animals can come and drink. So there's no reason for you not to have this word. The only reason if you don't get it you not or you don't want it is because you're rebellious as hell and you, you don't want to be saved. Read on. To a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. So that's the thing we did. We, we sinned against the Most High God. So he sent us, he punished us as, as a good father would. And then he sent what? Grace. He sent his prophets to teach us, hey, listen, get your mind right. You got a period of time to get it right, but don't delay because you don't know when your grace is going to end. Read. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. They are impudent children. Levi, give me that word. Whenever you get it, let me know. For they are what? For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. They are impudent children and stiff-hearted. Your heart is where? Is your head. Your brain. So you are hard-hearted. You are, that means you, you are hard-head. Uh, let's see, impudent. Not showing due respect for, uh, um, enlarge it, please. Not showing due respect for another person. Impertinent. Let me see. It. You got synonyms? Yes. Not showing due respect for another person. So that means Israel is very disrespectful. Stiff neck and disrespectful. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I just want—I said it. Disrespectful. I just want that word. Very disrespectful. That's Israel. Nobody can tell them nothing. If you notice something, Israel is the most disrespectful people to who them? To who? To each other. Because you look at yourself as a nigga, so therefore everybody else is a nigga. Because you got no self worth, everybody else got no self worth. But when it comes to the white man, you sit down very lovely. You listen to anything he says, no problem. But another black man teaching you, you think you could disrespect him any which way you want. But here's the thing. Be very careful because the prophets are back on the earth. And if you can recognize him, raise your hand and say, yeah, I know, I know you're not this, you're not that. So you don't know who you're disrespecting. That's the point I'm trying to get across. Now, imagine what you're going to say to the Lord if you've always been disrespectful to Abraham. Always been disrespectful to Jeremiah, or Esdras, or Isaiah, or John, or Luke, or Peter, any other 12. you always been rebellious to the laws of God. So what do you think is going to happen to you in the end? But Lord, I never miss the Sabbath. I was always there. Yeah, you was always there because you could not miss an opportunity to disrespect somebody. Orders are given to you. You don't want to do it. You always want to do your own thing. Because why? You're the top shot at done that. Well, every top shot to the done that gets killed at the end. You never see gangsters get chubby and retired in Miami. So you want to be that rebellious soul that just want to live your life like crazy? Keep, keep it going. You're going to get your just reward. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but you will get yours. All right, read on. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. Mm -hmm. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. No, you're going to speak your own word unto them. Thus saith the Lord God. So this is what you guys are not getting. Even though it's men that are speaking to you, but they're not speaking their own words. Because as they hear, they speak. And where do they hear from? From this Bible. So when you choose to be a rebellious soul, or I'm going to use the word impudent, it's what? You are rebelling against the Most High God. Not to men. When you choose to lie to a prophet of the Most High God, you ain't lying to a man. You lying to the Holy Ghost, as it says in the book of Acts uh, chapter 5. So you keep doing the things you're doing. Guess what? The prophets are doing their jobs. They are doing the job that they were called for, to teach, to warn the people of the danger that's coming. But are you taking heed to the warning? Are you in your own head and you comfortable in your own little space? Those are the questions you got to ask yourself. Read on. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. So the Bible tells you straight up, if you believe in Deuteronomy 28, believe in 
Ezekiel, well, believe in the whole Bible. But right now we're focusing on verse 5 in the book of Ezekiel chapter 2. It says, and whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Right? We're going to keep teaching. Most I say, for they are a rebellious house. But pay attention to this part. You may be rebellious today. You might look at us as nobodies. The scriptures say, you will know you were in the presence of a prophet one day. Which day is going to be? The day that your life turned topsy-turvy and all hell break loose. And you're going to remember every single word that was spoken to you. Then your life is going to unfold exactly how you were told it's going to happen because you was rebellious. Then you're going to realize, damn, the prophets were speaking and I wasn't listening. Too late. There's a day you're going to be searching for the prophets. You won't find us. It's going to be too late because guess what? You took us for granted. Read. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. So what that tells you about Israel, Israel is going to try to come at us and try to hurt us, speak evil words. That's Israel's characteristic. But the scripture says it's a light thing to do the work. It comes with the territory, so we're going to have to go through it. Read. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words. So most I call Israel scorpions. What do scorpions do? They sting you from behind. So that means we're going to have traitors among us, haters among us, trying to destroy what the Most High is building. Read. Nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So they're going to give you a screw face. Mm -hmm. Suck their tip. Don't worry about that, Most High said. Read. And thou shalt speak my words unto them. What words are we going to speak? And thou shalt speak my words unto this them. This is what a lot of people are not getting. We're not speaking our word. We're not teaching our own words. We're teaching what's written in the Bible as it is written. So when you choose not to listen, you ain't ignoring me. You ain't ignoring the bishop. You ain't ignoring the captains, the, uh, the, the, the bishops, and the, and the deacons. You ignoring the voice of the Most High God. Read on. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So the scripture says, don't get discouraged. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, teach them. Continue to teach them. Yes, they're going to get under your skin, but guess what? Teach them. That's what the Bible uh, command. Uh, give me Jeremiah 28, verse 8. Jeremiah 28, verse 8. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So the prophet's job is to have always been to prophesy against many countries. So the Bible is never for everybody. Why would they prophesy against those countries? Because those countries always had the children of Israel in servitude, in slavery. So the prophets prophesied against them, um, against many countries, against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. That's not what we're doing today. It's the same thing our forefathers did. It's the same thing we're doing. We're letting you know there's going to be war, rumors of war, diseases and pestilences. Great evil is befalling this earth. We tell you guys to get ready. Prepare yourself. Make sure you got food in your house. Build your own little pantry. You follow? If you have money, get yourself a nice little generator in case your power go out and it's dead winter. You got kids. But guess what? Many of us are in la-la land. Ah, these Negroes don't know what they're talking about. That's how a lot of us act. Because I, like, I'm almost certain the majority of us don't, 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 are, not, are not ready for even two weeks worth of hunger. Most of us don't have two weeks worth of water in their house. That means what? Y'all not taking the prophet seriously. Warning, warning. Show me where the prophets give warning and then nothing happened. It doesn't exist in the Bible. So the problem is today is you guys are not looking at us as prophets of the Most High God. Just another nigga. He wear jeans and t-shirts. Maybe we need to start wearing suit and tie. Not. Ain't going to happen. 
but you probably would listen more. So that means your heart is in Creflo Dollars Church. Right. On a low, you still sneak around and try to convince him, let me see what ridiculous thing he said. Right, right, right. So I can mock him. <laughs> Five hours later. That, that was a good sermon, you know. Not for nothing. That was a good sermon. Still watching Joel Austin on the low. You think I'm joking? Shoot. Give me Hosea 12. So Mosai always talk to the prophets because that's how the prophets know what's coming next. Give me that. The b- Hosea 12 and 2. 12 and 10. The book of Hosea, chapter 12 and verse 10. I have spoken. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by ministry of the prophets. So, most I have always been giving the prophets visions, right? You could be like, Negro, you ain't getting no visions. No, you're all right. I'm not getting a vision. But remember, most I talked to the prophets in visions, right? Give me Habakkuk 2, verse 2. The book of Habakkuk. Chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Right. Do what with the vision? Write the vision. See, our forefathers had visions and Mosai say, write the vision. Read. And make it plain upon tables. Because we used to use tables of stone to write back then. Read. That he may run that readeth. That he do what? That he may run that readeth it. So you see, you are right. No, I'm not getting no vision, but most I already gave our forefathers the vision, and he makes sure they wrote it down. To who? For those who's going to come afterwards, and that's going to have enough sense to open a book and read. Why do you think they prevented us from reading and writing in slavery? Because they did not want us to read this. Read it again from the top. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. So the visions were for an appointed time. Read. But at the end it shall speak. It's going to speak one day. And you're going to know that you had a prophet among you. Read. And not lie. And not lie because the word of God never lie. Read. Though it tarry, wait for it. So the scripture wants us to be patient, but a lot of us are not patient. Man, they be talking all that crap that nothing is happening. I'm just going to go about and do my, my own business. All right. Go ahead. You're going to get stuck out there. Read. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It will surely come. Whatever the Bible says is going to happen, it's going to happen. At the time appointed. So that's why the Bible said, in your patience, possess your soul. So it's written. The vision is written. The the, the vision of the Lord is in this Bible right here. And all you got to do is read and find out what the vision is saying. Give me Revelation 1 and 3. But many of us don't like reading. We like soap operas. We like movies. We like TV. We like to see images. We don't want to read not a damn thing. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 3. Bless is he that readeth. Bless is who? Bless is he that readeth. Why would you be blessed if you read? Because you're going to see the vision and most are going to give you the understanding of the vision and you're going to see what life is about. Which in turn is going to help you get your mind right, get yourself together and prepare yourself or prepare your soul for the returning of the Lord Christ. So if you do those things, you're going to be blessed. But if you're not reading, will you understand the vision? Will you be able to get your life together? How can you get your life together when you don't even know law one? How can you get your life together and you don't even know what your heritage is? You don't know what sin is. You ask the average average Christian, what is sin? They don't know. But they've been in church their whole lives. You know the problem is? They are not reading, therefore they're not blessed. Read. Read it again from the top. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. The prophecies are all throughout the Bible, and they're going to happen. Read. 
and keep those things which are written therein. That's the most important thing. Yeah, you're hearing the prophecy. Yeah, you're reading. But guess what? As you read and you see, your job is to keep the things that are therein, that are written therein. That shall not hate thy brother in thine heart. That shall not steal. That shall not lie. Men and men should lie together. Women and women should not lie together. You follow? Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You got to remember all these things. Fringes on your clothes, the, the feast days. You got to keep them because we have lost our way and it's time for us to come back. Read. For the time is at hand. The time is at hand. Give me 1 Timothy 4.13. There is not a lot of time left. So this is not the time to keep messing up in the truth. This is not the time, like um, like I was, I, I wrote, uh, I wrote on the Telegram. With the new protocol we have, I know Mosai is doing a purge with it. Because I guarantee you, there's gonna be some people that's gonna wake up that just don't feel like coming. They're gonna call. <coughs> I got a cough, thinking they're calling their boss. Like they're doing a cold winter day after a snowstorm. Yeah, I don't feel well. I don't think I'm coming, boss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, you can fool me all day, every day. All I can do for you when you tell me you're sick, hey, brother, feel better. I'm going to send up some prayers for you. But, dude, don't forget there is a God that's watching you. The scripture said their angels, their angels do behold them. That means every single one of us got our own angels taking notes. Yep. He called the prophets and lied about his health. Duly noted. How many times he did that? 25 times. All right. Give him a real sickness for 25 days. Since you want to lie about your health, let's see what happens when you really get sick now. That's why the scriptures say, why would a living man uh, cry for the punishment of his own sin? Certain things we call it upon ourselves. Matter of fact, let's let's prove that. Give me wisdom of Solomon. You think it's a joke. I'm gonna digress a little bit because the scripture warned you about Israel. They are most impudent children. So certain characteristics they're gonna have. Uh verse um uh Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, so I read verse 12, 13, and jump to 15. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 12. Seek not death in the error of your life, and pull not upon yourself destruction with the works of your hands. You hear that, people? Seek not death with the errors of your life, and pulled, pull not upon yourselves destruction. So which means there are things you're doing, you are begging for the Lord to send destruction your way. So it says, seek not the death with the errors of your life and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands, with your doings. One of the biggest doings is lying because it's the easiest thing to just lie. But the scripture says you're not lying to men, you're lying to God. Read on. For God made not death. For God made not death. Neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. But ungodly men with their works and, and words called it to them. For when they thought to have it, their friend, they consumed to not. And be, and. And made a covenant. Come on, read it right, man. Stop. Come on. But ungodly men with their works and the words called it unto them. Called it to them. For when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to not. And made a covenant with it. Because they are worthy to take part with it. So Namosa already tells you what kind of men do these things. It said ungodly men with their works and words. Called it to them. So don't cry when, sh when, when stuff starts happening to you. Just remember your works and your words. There's no words that speak so secretly that no man knows. Most I, I may not know what you say, but most I knows. So if you're sitting in your house and talking trash about people in the congregation, watch your words. 
you're going to get jacked up. Because God said, I didn't create death. Neither, I don't have pleasure in the destruction of the living. Well, scripture says, I wish that all, all Israel would be saved. But Israel has a lot of ungodly men. So the things that they do and the things that they say bring great judgment against them, upon them, because why? They are doing those things and saying those things against the prophet of the Most High God. So if you have nothing good to say, put your hand over your mouth. The churning of uh, milk produces cream. Pressure bus pipes. Stop, stop yourself in your track. You got a wife as a man that's running a mouth. Stop her in her tracks. Hey, babe, you better stop talking before you say something you're going to regret. Because you're, you're angry right now. You're just running your mouth. Saying all kind of nonsense. And you're speaking against the Lord's anointed. Shut up. But some of you just let them run their mouth. They're talking, talk, 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 talk. Better shut up because most are going to jack you up. Same thing for as a sister. You have a, you have a husband that's a softy that likes to come to you and complain about everything while you're rubbing his head. Well, guess what? You're an accomplice too. Matter of fact, let's prove it. I'm digressing for a second. Acts 5. Because it said your word is going to get you killed, right? Let's read the, an example. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 1. Mm hmm but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife. So, so husband and wife, read. Sold a possession and kept back part of, part of the price, his wife also being privy to it. So she was privy to the situation. I mean, she's, she's aware, fully aware of what, 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 what went down. Read. And brought a certain part and laid it, uh, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said... Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remaineth, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou, thou hast not lied unto men. Thou hast not lied unto who? Thou hast not lied unto men, uh -huh. but unto God. Read. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that so, heard these things. Ananias died of what? Well, how did he call death upon himself? With his words. And when you read further down, the same thing happened to his wife. Because why? She lied too. Let's get back to the class. Go, go back to um, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. So if you read... You'll be blessed to know these things. And when you know these things, you're going to be like, damn, you know what? I am a liar. And I don't want to call death up on myself. So you know what? Let me fix my spirit. But if you don't read, you think because you're lying, you're lying, and nothing happening to you, everything is great. No, not at all. Everything is not great. The angel of death is next to you, and you don't even know it. Just like he was right next to Moses by the end. Most I, for, uh, you know, give him a pass, but it's like, yo, I'm going to kill this dude. Read 4.13. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 13. And verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. You hear that? Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Because if you're reading... Matter of fact, that's a law. Is Christ here yet? No, sir. So, till he come, give attendance to reading. If you're reading, then when it's time to exhort, you're going to have the proper things in your head to exhort people with. And to doctrine, what is doctrine? The Lord, Proverbs 4 and 2. You can have these things in you. So, it, it benefits you to study this book. It's going to make you a better person. Read. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, which the lady... Jump to verse 15. Verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. So the Bible says, meditate upon these things and give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. So when you're a man that's really about this work, 
people are going to know. When you're full of it also, people are going to know. Because you're not going to, the man that's about this, this work and the man that's not about it, they're not going to move the same way. They're not going to speak the same way. Their walk is not going to be the same way. Their, their, their demeanor is not going to be the same way. Because scripture says wisdom changes the severity of a man's face. So you can look at a man in the truth and like, oh, damn, this, this dude is about his business. Go to uh, Ma uh, Malachi 2 and 7. These are the things that you're supposed to meditate upon. But most I call us to be the prophet of the most high God. So we must study this Bible. Read. The book of Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they, thus, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So our lips are supposed to keep knowledge. Because the people are supposed to keep be seeking the law out of our mouth. So if we're not giving ourselves wholly unto these things, if we're not reading, if we're not stud studying, how can we edify the people? How can we exhort the people? How can we teach the people doctrine? That will show that why we're taking our job for granted. And if we're taking our job for granted, most are going to deal with us as well. Because the scripture says, be not many masters, for you shall receive the greater condemnation. So we got to be very mindful as leaders how we conduct ourselves. You're a soldier, you're a leader. You're an officer, you're a leader. Captain, you're a leader. Deacon, you're a leader. Bishop, you're a leader. So just because you're a soldier, that mean, ah, let me just chill and do nothing and uh, watch porn all day and just do my thing. I'm just a soldier. You follow? I'm just a soldier. They ain't going to miss me. Let me just lie and say something wrong with me. I just stay home and chill. Mosiah is watching you. You're not, you're not taking care of the flock of, uh, uh, of the Mosiah God. Because say your lips should keep knowledge. And the law should be sought out, out, out of our mouth. So we should be reading. We should be studying daily. Give me Acts 17, 11. The book of Acts, chapter 17 and verse 11. These were more noble than those are in Thessalonica. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So that's what the scripture is talking about. So these brothers right here, they were more noble says, than those in Thessalonica. Why? Because they received the word with readiness of mind. They had a mind to do the work and they searched the scriptures daily. You spend your whole life away from this book and now you find out this book is your heritage. And you're not looking at it daily? You're not reading like it says, till I come give attendance to reading? So if you want to be noble, these are the things you got to do. Because if you search the scriptures daily and you have a readiness of mind, then guess what? You're going to receive it, you're going to accept it, and you're going to apply it. It won't be pulling teeth to get you to apply two scriptures in your life. It will be a second nature. Because the Bible says it's a light thing. Give me Job 23, 12. It's not hard. You just got to want to do it. But if you don't even know why you're here, then why should you want to do it? The book of Job, chapter 23 and verse 12. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You see that, people? Job said, I didn't go back from the words that I hear from his lips. Was Christ standing there talking to Job? The mouth of God is this Bible. That means Job was in this book. And he said, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Because Christ tells you what? Men does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So you got your flesh that you cook, your nice meals. Right? You prepare your lasagnas. You prepare your, uh, your, your steaks. You know what I'm saying? You go in when it's time to eat. Raise your hand if you like to eat garbage food. If it was up to you, you'll have a gourmet dinner every day. Am I lying? As well, you should if you can't, if you can't afford it. But guess what? That same mind, that same attitude we have towards a regular food, we should have it towards this Bible. Because this is the food for the spirit. 
how much of it do you want to gobble down? Because you should be designing this above your food. Because that's the food that gives life. The other food is just fill up the belly and you know where it goes after that. Some of y'all send 30 minutes before it goes down. Sweating. Right, brother? Sweating. Brothers come out losing five pounds. Like, whoo, you boys working out in there? <laughs> so our mind's supposed to be what? On this book right here. Read that verse again. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. So this, these words got to be above food. Give me Luke uh, 645. We got to desire this work because guess what? Mosai chose us to do the work. He called us. He was, he were, we were born to do this. So guess what? Our mind, our spirit got to be linked up with this. Read that. Yep. The book of Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. A good man out of a good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. So if you're studying, because what is good? Romans 7 verse 12 tells you good is what? The laws. So if you're reading, you desire this more than your necessary food, guess what? It's going to cause you to become a good man. And when you open your mouth and speak, you're going to speak good things, which is what? The law, statutes, and commandments. The right words are always going to come out your mouth. Read. And an evil man out of, his, out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. So if you're not reading, if you're not studying, if you don't give yourself wholly to this book, think about this for a second. Especially you brothers and sisters who are in the position to give people counsel. Take that position very, very serious. You are dealing with people's soul. So if you ain't studying, if you ain't reading, how the hell are you giving people good advice? And secondly, if you're going to give people advice, every time you give somebody advice, can ask yourself, am I applying this in my life? Because sometimes maybe you are, you are giving good advice, but guess what? Are you living those good advice yourself? Focus and study the Bible. So you don't become an evil person speaking evil things. When somebody calls you, you give them advice based on how you're feeling for the day. If you're feeling good and happy, then they get, you know, the scriptures. If you're feeling messed up because you, you have a little altercation or argument with a brother or sister or your husband or your wife, then guess what? That same evil spirit, you transfer it to them. Then you, you like the scriptures say, you make, them, you make the person twice the child of the devil. Don't take it for granted the position that you're in. And don't use it as a reason to destroy soul because if you do, most I will destroy you. You're going to receive the greater condemnation. So study the Bible so you could be that good person that have good things to say. And as you say, remember, them same people you're talking to, they're watching you. So when you're doing, when you're saying and you're not doing, then you look like a hypocrite and they're going to get at you. Read. For, for of the abundance of the heart of his mouth, speak it. Read it right, bro. That's not what my Bible says. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. You are right, brother. You are right. <laughs> Maybe I messed up. I need glasses. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. You know what? Read it from the top because you didn't read it right. The it didn't book sound right in my ear. So I'm right, off. Right, right. The book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 45. A good man out of a good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. I know you will. I know something. You say for, for the abundance. You not say for of. I, like, I'm not bugging. I know when I hear things, it's not right. I couldn't figure it out, but I know something was off. Read it again, man. My English may be messed up, but I can hear English real good. <laughs> all right, all right. The book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 45. A good man out of a good treasure of the heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart 
bring it forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. So for, the, for of the abundance of the, mouth, of the heart, his mouth speaketh. The heart is your brain. Before words can come out, it goes to your brain. So whatever's in your brain, that's the only thing that can come out. So picture this. A whole week went by. You didn't study. You didn't watch no videos. You didn't do nothing. What the hell you think you're going to be talking about? The Bible? Hell no. That's not what's in your brain. The garbage that you're watching on Facebook, the garbage you're watching on TikTok, the garbage you're watching on uh, what else? Twitter, Tumblr, uh, uh, Instagram. Those are the garbage that's going to come out your mouth. The movies you sat down and spent six hours watching, that's what's going to come out your mouth. So it's only natural now. Guess what? If something goes wrong, you explode. Because what good thing is in you to teach you to keep your peace? Speak in a calm manner. Think before you utter a word. The Bible is not there. So the spirits that Esau put in you, those are the spirits that's going to react. That's how things get out of order because guess what? Somebody's not studying this book. Be mindful. Uh, give me Psalm 119 verse 172. The book of Psalms chapter 119 and verse 172. My tongue shall speak of uh, thy word. Start at uh, 171. The book of Psalms chapter 119 verse 171. My lips shall utter praise. When thou hast taught me my, thy statutes, my tongue shall speak of thy word. For all, my, for all thy commandments are righteousness. You hear that, people? My lips shall utter, utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. Because when you know the laws, you're supposed to be giving the most high praise without ceasing. Because you know where you come from. You know where you could have been. And you should know where you at. Totally different place from where you should have been and where you come from. So you should be giving the Lord praise. So if you're grateful for these things, then guess what? Your tongue will speak the words of God. Because why? You dwell in the commandments of God. So when you speak, you're always going to speak the word of God. For it says, thy commandments are righteousness. Thy commandments are righteousness. Give me uh, Sirach 2. So if you want to know what righteousness is, there it is right there. So when you want to, like, do you see yourself as a righteous person? When you speak, does righteousness proceed from your mouth? When you speak to your Lord, is it nigger Lord? Or do you apply exactly what the Bible says on how to address your husband? How to address your Lord? You know what I'm saying? As a, as a, as a, a, a Lord, do you speak with your hands? You follow? Are we applying what the Bible says in our lives? It's high time to wake up from our sleep and actually do this the way we're supposed to be doing it. It's our profession, people. It's not a hobby. It's not a pastime. It's our profession. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 2, in verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways. So if you fear God, you ain't going to disobey his words. You're not going to disobey his words. But guess what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you don't fear God, will you be studying? Because to get the fear of God in you, you must be reading. You must be studying so you can read what the Bible says, how the books I dealt with different situations, and be like, damn, you know what? I don't want to be this dude right here. That thing got me scared. I need, I, I need to apply the laws of God in my life. So if you're not studying, do you fear God? No, you don't. When the Bible says, do this, do you do it? Like how many times we say, sisters, meditate on Proverbs 31, meditate on Titus, meditate on Sirach 25 and 26. How many of you guys actually do that on a daily basis? You ain't got to raise your hand. Do you fear the Lord? Because you, do you want those attributes to be in you? Because if I want to develop a, a big chest muscle, what do I have to do? I got to do chest all the time, push-ups, gym, lifting heavy weights, always working on my chest. Then guess what? I'm going to develop a chest. 
So how can you come in the truth and thinking you're going to become a Proverbs 31 woman and don't meditate day and night on the, on the scriptures that, that can help you to become that? So is really the fear of the Lord in you? No, it's not. So you got to question yourself like, okay, do I really do I really want to be a Proverb 31? And if you do, what you must do? You must meditate on these scriptures. You must meditate on them on a level where you could recite the whole chapter by heart. Then those words are in you. You know them so that way when it's time to act them out, it's already in you. But if you can't even remember what the scripture says, when it's time to act, how can you act it out? You're going to act out what you see in movies, what you grew up in shows that's embedded in the deep recess of your brain that you don't even know exists. So to get, you need to meditate on the scriptures day and night to get the dirty water out your brain. So the scriptures can become second nature to you. That's how you know the word is in you. When situation occurs, when situation happens, and you handle it the proper way. Exactly how the Bible would tell you to handle it. At any time you see you, you lose your mind when things happen, you're not there yet. Got a long way to go. So there's a lot more reading that needs to be done because you are quick. You, you, um, script, um, I'm trying to paraphrase the scripture. Hold on. Ah, oh, damn. It's in Proverbs. Uh, give me, bear with me a second. I'm going to find it. How the hell am I going to forget it? Uh, da, 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 da. Give me a second. Oh. Uh, Proverbs 16.32, I read it. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit, then he that taketh the city. A city. So you got to understand this, this scripture. So if you're always angry, that means you, you're not about this truth. Because the Bible already tells you that it's not good to be angry. Proverbs 25.28. Uh, don't worry, I read that one. Stay where you at. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. All of us grew up without no rule over our spirit. So now, how do we get it? How do we get to rule our spirit? By applying the law, statutes, and commandments. So now, you supposed to examine yourself and examine yourself and see your shortcomings. Okay, what are my shortcomings? What scriptures? Can I apply in my life to help me overcome those shortcomings? And you meditate day and night on those scriptures apart from your other studies. You get what I'm saying? Because like uh, when you play sports, you like people that are serious with, uh, with, with their crafts. Okay, you are, you're a good player. Very good. You're nice. But your balance is off on your left foot. So what do you do? You go to practice with the rest of the team. Then after practice, you spend 30 minutes working on your balance on your left foot. You have to put that extra work, you see what I'm saying, to become whole. So besides the classes, the videos, whatever other things we have in place for you, the, the, uh, the telegram classes, guess what? You need to spend time meditating on the scriptures that, that, that's going to help you overcome your shortcoming. Because each and every single one of us have different shortcomings. Not everybody's a liar. Not as everybody's a thief, not as everybody's a fornicator, but guess what? All those spirits are among us. Picture yourself being a fornicator and you're meditating on uh, uh, that shall not steal. Is it wrong to know that shall not steal? No, there's nothing wrong with that. But dude, you're not dealing with the elephant in the room. So which means you're going to get destroyed. So go back to where you was at before, Sirach 2. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his words. Mm -hmm. And they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. You see that? If you fear God, you're going to seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. What is pleasing unto the Lord? To keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Read. And they that love him shall have shall be filled with the law. When you love God, you're going to be filled with the law. Give me Jeremiah 20. And if you're filled with the law, guess what? 
you're going to deal right with your brothers and your sisters. You follow? Because why? You're going to be that good man who bring good things out of the treasure of his heart. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 20 and verse 7. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and has prevailed. I am in derision daily. Every one mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried. I cried out. I cried violence and spoil. Because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. Nor so, hold up, hold up. So Jeremiah, as the prophet, is going through hell. He said, God, you deceived me. You say you, you created me to be your mouthpiece. But since I started speaking these words, all hell broke loose. That's not what's happening in our lives. Trials and tribulations. So uh, it says, uh, I've, I've become a derision daily, right? So what did Jeremiah say? Go to verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any, any more in his name. So a lot of time we feel like giving up, just like Jeremiah said. Because here's, here you are trying to help somebody. And then that same person is the same person that goes behind your back and, try, and talk evil about you and trying to destroy you, stabbing you behind your back. And then when they come before you, they're all smiles. You get what I'm saying? And you know the person is doing this. So that makes you want to do what Jeremiah did. Because Jeremiah's like, yo, these people throwing me in pits with doo-doo in it. You know what I'm saying? They're beating me up. Meanwhile, all he's trying to do is teach the people the right way to go. But yet, they hate him. It's like, I ain't going to speak these words no more. Read. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. You hear that, people? This is what Sirach was saying. You're going to be filled with the law. If you're filled with the law, it doesn't matter how you feel. The word is going to be like a fire inside of you. You going to speak. You going to teach. You going to continue doing the work. So when you see brother sitting back and don't want to do the work, and you look at the scriptures like, damn, Jeremiah was or, uh, uh, born to do this. And even if he wanted to, he couldn't stop himself from doing it. Because the word is was fire in him. So you got to start looking at brothers who ain't doing jack. Could it be the word is not fire in you? Could it be there's no fire in you at all? Because why is always pulling teeth to get you to do something? Why are you not here? Why are you not doing the work? Always an excuse. Meanwhile, Jeremiah is showing you the spirit you're supposed to have. If the word is in you, you feel with the spirit of the Lord, you're going to be on fire. People could try to stop you, they won't be able to. Because guess what? You, you can't, you just, it'll go back to verse 1. I mean, uh, chapter 1, verse 5. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1 and verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You see that? He was born to do this. This is why, go back to Jeremiah 20. This is why he could not stop. The, ver, the, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20 and verse 9. And then I said... I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire. It's, it's, like, it's like saying, man, you know, I don't feel like going to camp today. I'm not going to church. And then you lay down. Ah, 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 come on, give me my... Dress up, come running. My bad, I'm late, man. I was not in the spirit, brother. But you make it. But at no time should you be comfortable. Days after day, Sabbath after Sabbath, feast after feast, just chilling. And it doesn't bother you. And if people speak to you, oh, mm, eh, mm. something wrong with your spirit. Fix it because you're supposed to be on fire for this truth. Give me Revelation 3, verse 15. 
the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I will thou work cold or hot. So then, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So you either cold or hot. There's no in between. So if you're lukewarm, most likely going to spew you out of his mouth. So here's the question. What would make somebody cold? Give me Matthew 24 and 12. You're going to find out if you're cold, what's the problem? See, the Bible, with the Bible, you cannot hide nothing. We may not be able to say exactly what. Well, let's read the scripture first. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because of what? Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because of sin, that's why you end up being cold. So we may not be able to be like, ah, you're doing this sin or that sin. That's for you to examine yourself. So in this truth, we were called and born and ordained to be prophets of the Most High God. We need to be hot. We need to be on fire. So if you find yourself lukewarm, if you find yourself cold, get with the program or most are going to spew you out of his mouth. I'm going to end it right there. Shalom. More sign, Chris, bro. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>